Hi, I'm Timothy Brissell, and I want to discuss the simplex or introduce the simplex method for standard maximum problems for my Math 1325 class. And notice, here's a uh, linear programming problem. It says maximize, and we have this objective function, subject to, and some t constraints. I claim this problem is a linear programming problem. Oh, pardon me, a standard maximum linear programming problems. problem. The conditions for a standard maximum problem is that the objective function is to be maximized, and yes, it's been maximized. We have non-negativity constraints. Yes, we certainly have those. And finally, the other constraints are in the form linear algebraic expression is less than or equal to a non-negative number. Notice we don't have the x's squared. They're being added together. They are less than or equal to a non-negative number. So yes, these three conditions are satisfied. This is a standard maximum linear programming problem. We're going to memorize the uh, process for uh, using the simplex method for uh, solving standard maximum linear programming problems. So now if it's not a standard maximum problem, then you'll probably want to go to some online tool or use a uh, app on your phone or something to solve the problem because at this point the only thing we're memorizing the first thing we're doing is uh, standard maximum problems and yes this is a standard maximum problem the uh, uh, first thing we'll do in uh, when using the simplex method is we're going to rewrite the inequalities involving less than or equal to as equations so we should look at the formal definition of less than or equal to. A is less than or equal to B means that there exists a number S that's greater than or equal to zero so that A plus S is equal to B. Some non-negative quantity S is going to be added to take up the slack on the left side and make it equal to the right side. So this S value we're going to call a slack variable. It's picking up the slack on the left to make it equal to uh, the value on the right. So, with that in mind, let's move over here. I took the same problem and I recopied it over here. Let's rewrite the two less than or equal to constraints. Oh, let me move that down some. Let's rewrite this using the uh, definition of less than or equal to. Let's write it as an equation. The first one becomes x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 plus slack 1 is equal to 15. Notice I left some space there. Then now, the slack variable we used for the first inequality, we don't know it's going to be the same amount you add to make the left side equal 10 on the second inequality. So we're going to have to introduce this different slack variable, 2x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 plus a slack, second slack variable. Notice they're not like terms, so I'm not aligning them. It's going to equal 10. The third, we don't have to worry about the non-negativity constraints. That's not going to be uh, rewritten, but we're going to rewrite the objective function. We're going to pick the terms up on the right and move it over to the left. Now, I've seen uh, a few textbooks that move the z over to the right, and then you get a negative z. Instead of maximizing z, they start to mini they minimize negative z. So I, I don't want to do that. I'm going to take the more traditional approach, pick up all the terms on the right side of the objective function, move them over to the left. So that 3, 2, and 1, those coefficients are going to become what? When we pick those up and move them over to the left side, they're going to become negative. So we'll have negative 3x1 minus 2x2 minus x3. We still have that z, that's a positive z, is equal to, what have we got here on the right-hand side? We picked those terms up moved them over to the left. So what's left on the right-hand side? Yes, zero. So there's the system of equations. Now 
using that system of equations, I'm going to set up a matrix. I'll call this the simplex matrix. It's also called the simplex tableau. I guess if you want to be fancy and not say the matrix. Realize there's going to be quite a few, uh, there's going to be quite a few columns here. We're going to have three rows, one for each, uh, we're going to have three rows, one for each equation. But we're going to have to have a column for every one of these variables. So x1, x2, x3, then slack 1, slack 2, and z. The coefficients for x1, 1, 2, negative 3. For x2, we have a 2, 2, and a negative 2. For x sub 3, we have a 3, 1, and a negative 1. For S1, we have 1, S1 in the first row, and how many S row, uh, S1s do we have in the other two rows? None. For S2, we have 1S2 in row 2. What have we got here and here? Nothing. And finally, we have 1z in row 3, and the other two rows, no z's. I'm then going to draw a vertical line to indicate I'm moving to the other side of the equal sign. And my last column, 15, 10, and 0. As we go through the simplex process, you're going to see that that second and last column, the Z column, will never change. As a matter of fact, some people don't even show it because it never changes. I like to show it, though. And the numbers that are on the last row have a fundamental difference from those numbers above it. The numbers on the last row, they came about from the objective function. The other numbers they came about from the inequalities. So I'm drawing a horizontal bar to indicate that we've, uh, that we've, uh, that we're separating the objective function from the constraints. And that's how you set up the simplex tableau. I'll take a break and then we'll discuss what do you do once you get here. I'll just continue on with this problem, okay? Bye-bye.